it was practiced by uh, germs. Uh, for example, think of a gene pool uh, of germs or anything else as a portfolio. The uh, portfolio manager, which is natural selection, uh, seeks to increase the pool, uh, worries about downside risk, and if the pool becomes uh, too undiversified, and I do understand that two should be spelled T-O-O -O in that uh, slide, uh, but if it becomes too undiversified, uh, the game is over. So, uh, uh, so, so uh, any uh, gene pool acts uh, in a way which is efficient in terms of risk and return. Uh, the na uh, natural selection not only develops bunnies that hop fast and germs that infect fast, but also gene pools which are efficient in terms of risk and return, which is on that slide that I said it already. That's, you're on. <laughs> Professor Markowitz, thank you for your thoughtful insights on modern portfolio theory. It's an honor to be here with you today. Uh, we've asked our partners in different locations to prepare questions for you. But before we get to those, we would like to give our audience some more insight into Harry Markowitz, the man. Uh, you grew up in Chicago where your parents owned a small grocery store. Uh, you played baseball and the violin. Was it really your, your childhood aspiration to grow up and be econo uh, an economist one day? No. Uh, I, uh, wh when I was in high school, when I was in grammar school, I used to read shadow magazines. And I continued to read shadow magazines into high school. But somewhere along the way, uh, I started reading Philosophers, the original, uh, which you could buy at used bookstores for 50 cents a copy or something like that. Uh, and I also read uh, science at a popular level, like the ABC of relativity. When I got to the University of Chicago, I took these placement tests to decide where I should, you know. Uh, the, the University of Chicago at that time gave a two-year Bachelor of Philosophy degree. And uh, they gave you placement courses. And it turned out I learned enough physics and astronomy and maybe a little chemistry with my popular reading that they said, you don't have to take the placement course. And then uh, two years later, when I uh, had to decide which division to go into, uh, because I was done with the bachelor degree, I had to go on to the master's degree, uh, I forgot that I really love astronomy and physics, uh, especially astronomy. And I had had a course in economics, which was very interesting. It used a little math and uh, uh, social science. And I said, OK, I'll be an economist. So it's maybe five minutes worth of thought. Uh, during your studies, you were invited to become a student member of the Cowles Commission for Research in Economics, which has produced numerous Nobel laureates over the years. Is it the ultimate dream of a scientist to receive such a distinguished prize? It shouldn't be. Uh, if uh, it's like a pot, watch pots, you should, you know, it never boils. Um, uh, yes, uh, yes, in one sense, is the ultimate gr dream. And you certainly, you know, are delighted when it happened, if and when it happened. But if you work toward, I if your obje object in life uh, is to get a Nobel Prize, you shouldn't be in science. You shouldn't be in any branch of science. Your object should be to solve really interesting, you know, to spend your days with fun people solving fun problems. Touche. Uh, how, Professor Markowitz, how did the, the basic concept of portfolio theory occur to you? Was it a sudden inspiration? What, what prompted you to, to delve into this realm? Well, uh, as I said, I was reading John Burr Williams, but how do I, uh, what, what caused me to be reading John Burr Williams? So you got time for a three minute anecdote? Absolutely. Okay. So uh, I was at the stage where I had to uh, choose a, uh, a, P a PhD topic, and I went to my advisor. Uh, J uh, Jacob Marshak, Yasha Marshak, uh, Professor Marshak, and somebody was in there uh, in his room, so I sat out in his ante room, and there was somebody else out there, and we talked, you know, why we were here. He was a broker, and uh, uh, he said, well, why don't you apply this, uh, this mathematics and so on to uh, stock market? So I went into Marshak and said, the guy out there <laughs> said that the, I should apply this to the stock market, you know, all this math that they've been teaching me. And... Uh, uh, Marshak said, well, uh, 
Alfred Coles, C-O-W-L-E-S, Alfred Coles, the founder of the Coles Commission uh, that you're a member of, uh, you know, had that as an objective. Uh, you know, he hoped that people would do that. Now, Marshak was in e economics, and I was trying to get a degree in economics, um, uh, and he didn't know the finance literature, so he gave me, uh, uh, he, he asked me to see uh, uh, Marshall Ketchum, Professor Ketchum. Ketchum gave me a reading list, include Graham and Dodd, of course, Riesenberger, Riesenberger Investment Companies and Their Portfolios, and uh, 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 William, John Burr Williams' Theory of Investment Values. And it was well reading. Uh, I had re I had read uh, Graham and Dodd. I'd read. Uh, I'd looked at Wiesenberger's portfolios, and I had, uh, uh, and I was uh, reading John Burr Williams, where this aha insight came. And I'll just tell you one more little thing about the aha. Uh, I decided that the I would treat not only would I you know uh, look at the mean and variance of the portfolio as a whole, uh, but I would uh, treat uh, uh, returns on securities as if they were random variables. I knew what the expected value or the mean value of a weighted sum of random. Oh, the portfolio is a whole. The return on the portfolio is a weighted sum of the returns on the individual securities, uh, weighted by the portfolio that you choose. I knew what the expected value of a weighted sum was, but I didn't know what the variance of the weighted sum was. And uh, uh, I looked up in a book by Wiesenberger, uh, no, no, by Uspensky, Wiesenberger is in the book, uh, by Uspensky. Um, uh, I got a book off the library shelf, Uspensky, Introduction to Probability, looked up the formula for the variance of the weighted sum, and it, it not only in, it involved the weights and the standard deviations, but it, or variances, but it involved the covariances, and I, that was the aha moment. Uh, the variance of the portfolio depended on the covariances as well as the variances. And I didn't know I was going to get a Nobel Prize for that insight, but I knew I was going to get a PhD. Now uh, to the questions from our guests today in different Superfund offices around the world. The first question comes from Corte Madera. Uh, Vincent Crivello from Reliance Capital Advisors asks, what are the best ways to get access to non-correlated investments? How should we evaluate different non-correlated investment types? Uh, I, I don't usually do commercials for my clients, but uh, uh, I, I, I personally don't know of anything that uh, is much better than, uh, than the Superfund uh, uh, plan for going long and short. Uh, going along a, a diversified portfolio and going short a diversified portfolio and not leveraging too much. So uh, uh, there's a plug. <laughs> Thank Was you. that a plan? Uh, the, the, the next question <laughs> comes from Warsaw, Poland. Uh, Jerzy Piazny is a TV journalist with TV Business, and he asks, uh, the economic development of the CEE countries depends on capital inflows from developed countries. Do you think the erosion of confidence in financial institutions may affect these economies in Eastern Europe? Well, I think that, uh, uh, you know, uh, the confidence of financial uh, institutions uh, I'm sorry, is eroding all over the world. So as long as uh, Poland seems politically safe, uh, uh, we, and uh, militarily safe, then uh, I think there's no, uh, Poland will be uh, certainly an attractive uh, uh, place to invest. Uh, this next question comes from Bloomfield, Connecticut. Uh, James Rice from Spear Capital Management asks, how predictive are volatility and covariance estimates, and is there one best method to estimate asset volatility and covariance? Um, no, the answer is no, there's not one best method. There is a history of uh, methods of trying to estimate uh, volatility and covariance. Uh, they sometimes uh, say that uh, Markowitz wanted you to use a full covariance matrix. 
Well, if you look at my 1959 book, which is called Portfolio Selection, Efficient Diversification of Investments, and is available on Amazon.com, uh, <laughs> delivers over, you know, ships overnight. Uh, if you look at uh, Chapter 4, the last uh, two pages, you'll see that uh, I said there's too many covariances. And for computational reasons at that time, uh, you have to use a model of covariance or recommend a model of covariance. The first model of covariance that was explored was the single factor model of uh, Bill Sharp, uh, which uh, happened when I was sitting at the Rand Corporation, a young man, uh, we figured it's 1960. Uh, Bill, Bill and I, uh, between us, figured it's got to be someplace in 1960s. So you knew 